Yes, I'm back fiddling with my UV exposure unit. And uh, yeah, in the beginning of that video, there should have been a card and there's a link below to the whole playlist, how I built that thing. Uh, anyway, at some point I got a problem here with one of the boards. Some LEDs went dark, only some. The rest still worked and uh, yeah, one after the other died. See the attempted repair video card link. Anyway, I ended up simply yeah, killing that quadrant here of the exposure boards. There are in total four strings of LEDs on each board. And yeah, let's have a look at the details. And that's how the LED boards look today. So four strings of LEDs, 12 LEDs each with a little series resistor limiting the current. 48 volts go in and 12 LEDs in a string. Each LED 3.2 volts about -ish makes a total voltage here of 38.4 volts, means I have to drop over the resistors 9.6 volts and driving the LEDs at 20 milliamps, I come to 480 ohms and I build in 510 ohms. So these should run a little under 20 milliamps, yeah, just to be on the safe side and uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> problem is these LEDs have a failure, failure mode where they create a short. Uh, and that means the total current is increasing until the next LED gives up and makes a short. And the current is even more increasing because less, vol yeah, less voltage drop and so on. So my solution was simply to, uh, yeah, to cut off the defect line of LEDs here on the board, but that's of course not a solution. My initial idea was to use a linear LED driver and these are really nice chips that come, uh, yeah, as SMD variants, but also in a small TO. 29 case with only I think two pins out or something and uh, yeah these are basically <laughs> constant current sources but uh, the problem here is uh, you get them for 20 milliamps but uh, yeah for example the microchip CL2 and 3 is plus minus 10 percent and uh, yeah worst case you end up at 20 milliamps and the diodes AL5890 plus minus 7.5 percent so worst case 20 21.5 milliamps and uh, that's a little bit overdriving the LEDs and uh, obviously these are very cheap LEDs and uh, yeah they cannot take that for very long I guess. Uh, one note uh, that diodes chip here it can operate up to 400 volts just if you want to drive some uh, led lighting directly from mains ac that's a nice <laughs> two pin option one chip two pin option to do that next i had a look at the classic lm317 constant current circuit uh, as you might know these three pin voltage regulators uh, they don't really care <laughs> if that pin is connected to ground or somewhere all they care about is the voltage between the output pin and that reference pin and they keep that voltage at their internal reference voltage and the reference voltage for a typical LM317 is between 1.2 2 and 1.3 volts. That's 1.25 volts plus minus 4% or so. And they also come, yeah, the variant LZX in a tiny little TO29 
which is uh, good enough to drive 20 milliamps. Yeah, calculate the right resistor for the voltage drop of 1.25 volts at 20 milliamps and use a 1% resistor here and you come to a total variation in current of 4.8%, much better than 10 or 7.5% and a maximum current of 19.7 milliamps, which is kind of okay unless you think about worst case and say okay one board is operating at minus 4.8 percent and the other board is operating everywhere with plus 5.8 percent then you have an exposure difference of 10 percent between the two halves and uh, yeah so i dug a little bit deeper and I came up with the diodes AP73815 volt regulator, which has an internal voltage reference of 5 volts plus minus 2%. Yeah, give that uh, in series a 261 ohm resistor plus minus 1%, and you end up with a constant current of plus minus 2.9%. So a maximum of 19.7 milliamps and a minimum of 18.6 milliamps. And yeah, uh, I did a lot of parametric search for uh, cheap, simple, small voltage regulators. And that was the best I could come up with. Um, if you want more precision, more parts, more money. But yeah, that would, should suffice I guess. So uh, let's build that up. I have of course the parts all here and test it. I've built everything up on that breadboard here and this is my current and this is my voltage across the whole circuit and I added one LED and you can see at 9.5 volts, we are at 19.06 milliamps. And below that, my current drops, which is okay because, yeah, I will show you later. But when we get a little bit higher, yeah, we are at 19.1 milliamps and yeah. We can drive the voltage up and we stay at 19.1, yeah, 19.12, 19.13. That's okay. And 19.1, I don't want to burn that regulator here with too much voltage drop. And 19.1 is pretty much in the middle between 19.7 and 18.6 milliamps. Okay, so we are fine here. Now uh, let's take the voltage a little bit down further and take the LED out of the equation and just measure the voltage drop. Sorry, that's a little bit overexposed across here. So my regulator, including the resistor, because you remember, I only have 6.9 volts to drop. Okay. So when do we reach the 19.1 milliamps? Okay. So 19.06 looks good. Looks still good. Okay, now it's decreasing. So around 5.5 .5 volt dropout voltage and that's well within, uh, yeah my budget of 6.9 volts. Perfect. Uh, now I have to get a board out and actually repair it. 
I replaced in one LED string the old series resistor by our voltage regulator resistor constant current combo and yeah that was the defect string so some LEDs might not light up let's see oh yeah oh yeah so there's definitely a dead one let me mark that and this one here yeah that's definitely also dead and well, i don't know if you can see that on camera I'm flooding this here a little bit. Uh, let me take the ex uh, auto exposure back. But no, that was not a good idea, was it? Uh, give me a sec. Okay, uh, what I wanted to say is this LED also doesn't look too good. You might think it's the angle, but if I move it a little bit, yeah. You see it's not as bright as the others. Okay, let's take that one out too. Just marking it black. So let me replace these three LEDs and then we'll see what's next. Okay, I changed the LEDs, let's see. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to look. And yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, how shall I put it? I'm tempted to simply close up everything now because yeah, it's, it's working and I know how to fix the problem, but uh, last time I killed, I think, half a dozen LEDs here in that string. So uh, maybe I should, uh, yeah, go the whole mile and replace these resistors by constant current sources too. Eh, let's see. And here it is. One, two, three, four, and... Ah, wonderful, but wait, there is a second board which I have to do too. And believe me, it's an ugly job doing this modifications on a perf board. Yeah, that's, don't look at it too closely. It's horrible, pure buttery. So I modified the second board too, and now the great moment. And you know, it never, oh, yeah, in fact, it does. So, <laughs> uh, well, on the first try, no cold joints, no, yeah, uh, no problems. It just works. Oh, I'm happy. Uh, yeah, uh, tedious work, you know, redoing these perf boards, but uh, now I can put everything together again. Everything is back together again and working. And there was a reason I took this little adventure, uh, tedious work upon me. And <laughs> that was, well, I hope in a few weeks time I finished the layout. Uh, for the circuit board for my constant current load. Yeah, card link to the playlist. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I will finish this project uh, in uh, yeah a few weeks. I don't know, within a month. Let's see. Till then, bye.